Hi there. This is going to be a not so quick video about the new Brightspace portfolio app and user experience on Chromebook or your PC. The new Brightspace portfolio is an online portfolio that allows anyone really from kindergarten students to grade 12 students to adults to teachers gives them a place to store evidence store learning show their learning and demonstrate their learning and the portfolio is intended to kind of keep those things with them as they move throughout uh, their academic career from grade to grade the brightspace portfolio is available on any apple device from the apple store any android device from the google play store and works on any Chromebook or PC that you may have in your classroom. As I mentioned, it's intended for anyone from K to 12 and beyond to use to capture evidence of their learning, a place to store their learning, and develop a, a portfolio of online work over time. So I'd like to show you a little bit about how that's going to work for you at NCDSB. So I try to do my best here to get my iPad hooked up to the computer so I can demo this for you. So what you're looking at now is my iPad screen. And like I said, you can do this from any Android or Apple device. And I know a number of our teachers have iPads in their classrooms. So once you download the portfolio app, and I showed you a little bit ago how you could get that from the Apple Store or Google Store, you're going to click on it. A quick setup is going to ask you to allow your camera, allow your microphone, and allow access to photos. Uh, that's the things it's going to use to put stuff into the portfolios. If this was a personal device that a student had on their phone or, or, or something like that, you would select my device. But for our intents and purposes, we're going to select class device. And I'll show you first how it works for the younger grade. So this is how I would do things if I'm in a younger class, K, grade one, grade two, is in class with Funster. Now, I'm going to quickly pause this and roll over here to a class where I can show you how I got these. So every class has these little scan cards attached to it and it's a quick way and it's an easy way to, to have only one or two devices in your class and allow younger students to be able to use the Funster portfolio and I've used it with a number of JK SK classes last year and it worked really well. I printed these, you don't need to print them but they can just remain on the screen or be printed. And now I'm going to scan that class pass card to let the iPad know that we're in my class. And now the device is ready. So the teacher scans their pass card, and now the device is ready to be scanned or used by any other students in the class. So every student is going to have their own pass card. No typing passwords, no typing codes. All they're going to need to do is scan their pass card. And what you're seeing here is the funster. He's sleeping. We're going to click on the alarm clocks to wake them up. And I hope you can hear this. Well, hey there. So she just said, well, hey there, the funster. And we're going to click on let's go. Can you show me your card, App is asking the student to show their pass card. So the student, all they have to do is scan that pass card nice and quick and easy. Can I see some of your cool and now they're asking to see some of the student's work. So the student will hold the device near their work. It'll ask them to hold still, hold still. and it'll take a picture. Like it now asks the student if they like the way that looks. Um, the student didn't have to press any buttons, really didn't have to do anything. You can press yes, can I hear more about and the funster asks if they can hear more about the cool work. So the student will press talk time. This is a photo of the flyer that I made for summer school, last summer, summer school 2018. And now it's done. Now it's ready to be passed on to the next student. So it's quick. It's pretty easy. Uh, it's just a scan and uh, it, it's that simple. So once the teacher's logged in with their pass card, the device can be passed around. So even if you only have one device, it can be passed around to students and they can scan their pass card and the funster does the rest. Pretty neat. Now let me show you what that'll look like back in a classroom. So whether you have a Chromebook or, or a PC, whatever you may be, you can head over to the eHub, click on your class that you have set up. You need to have a class set up to make this happen. If you don't know how to get onto the eHub, see my other video about logging onto the eHub. If you don't have a class set up, please call or email me and I can set up a class for you. So when you get into your eHub, all the students will see this icon here that says My Portfolio. And that's their own or your own personal portfolio. Anyone that has an account has their own personal portfolio. Only teachers will see this other icon that's next to it that says Portfolio. Now click on that to go into the portfolio and you'll see 
already uh, the evidence that we just collected is here. I have it set up so that I have to approve any evidence that goes into the student's portfolio first. So you can see my pretend student here, Dave. There's the picture that he just took and talked to us about. And now the teacher can give it a title, uh, can add comments or feedback, and that can be posted. The teacher can actually write notes that are just private for, for themselves to keep about the item in the portfolio. And then down here below, you can now listen to the audio that was recorded as well. This is a photo of the flyer that I made for a summer school. In so we're back on my iPad here. And again, it could be iPad. It could be uh, an Android device. So we're going to click on Portfolio. And I'm going to show you the other mode, which is in-class mode. And we've already been using in-class mode with a number of um, higher grades. Uh, this works well with anyone. Or this works in some of the younger grades if the teacher wants to collect some evidence. So if the student was presenting and the teacher wanted to catch some video or something. So we're going to click on in-class mode. Again, we're just going to scan that pass card that connects us to the class. Now we're connected to the class. Now the teacher is going to pass this along to the student and all the student has to do is scan their pass card. So now we are in in-class mode which allows us to on the right side you can see take video or a photo. So I'll just do a quick video to show you how a video works. Now I'm going to talk and tell you what I what you're seeing. This is some work I've been doing on some different robotics and coding stuff that we have that's going to be going out to teachers. A little sneak peek once I've taken that video, I can give the work a title. I can say more about it if I'd like. I just showed the inventory I took of the robotics and coding materials that we have. And I can also record down some other thoughts if I'd like to write anything. I can re-record what I've written. I can listen back to what I've said. And I can watch the video that I took. And again, that can either be the student doing that on their own behalf, or in a younger grade, maybe it's a teacher doing that, so they can have that, you know, take, it, take the video for themselves. And once I'm done, I'm going to press Done, and that's it. Now that iPad can be passed along to start collecting for the next student's portfolio. And I'll just take you back to the eHub. So now we're going to go back to our eHub class. So again, whether you have a Chromebook or, or an iPad or whatever you may use in your classroom. You go back to your eHub class. Click on Portfolio, and now we'll see under Approve Evidence um, the video that I just took for my student, Josh Donaldson. So the teacher can click on that, and again can re-watch the video. The teacher can again add comments, other feedback, take some private notes, give it a new title, listen to the audio uh, that was recorded afterwards can type additional thoughts or add evidence categories. If they choose so, they can share that and send that to parents for their viewing. And this stuff will just build up into the student's portfolio and it'll follow them uh, from year to year. So if I like it, if I approve, I'm going to approve that to portfolio. And now I've got two things in my student's portfolios. Uh, the little monsters are something you see for the younger students. And we can change that for older students in the settings. And you can also decide whether you want to have to approve the evidence or not. That's another setting that can be set up. And it really is quite a powerful tool that I'm sure you can think of many ways that you can use this in your classroom. Uh, now, if you're in a classroom that only has a Chromebook, uh, you would just use the portfolio as you see it here on the screen. Um, whether you're, again, whether you're on a PC or your Chromebook, you don't need to have the iPad or Android device to use it. So on my Chromebook or PC, I would just click on Portfolio. And teachers can add to student portfolios just by clicking on that portfolio and then adding to portfolio. They can upload any type of file. So maybe you took a video with your, your Chromebook or with your camera or something. You can upload any types of file. And we've also integrated and connected to Google Drive. So all you have to do is click on a Google Drive and anything that's in there will show up and you can add that to the portfolio as well. So again, any type of file can be video, documents, audio, whatever it may be, or anything from your Google Drive. Again, video, documents. So if you've recorded something 
um, on your Google Drive, whether maybe it's a screencast, an audio recording, anything like that, you can grab those files from your Google Drive. I'm just going to grab something quick here. And now that image is being loaded into this student's portfolio. And you can see it there. So now I can click on it. If they've got the evidence. Again, I can give it a title. Um, I can upload an audio file or I can have the student record some audio here. Type comments, feedback, and additional thoughts. So now I've uploaded something to that student's portfolio. And it works the same way for students. They can also upload their own stuff to their portfolio. And I'll show you how. So now I'm logged into my eHub class and I see my portfolio here. That's my portfolio as I'm this student, Josh Donaldson. So I'm going to click on my portfolio. I'm going to click on my class. I can see anything that my teachers added or that I've previously added. But then I can also add to my own portfolio. And again, any type of file, anything from my Google Drive, whether it's videos, audio, whatever that may be. So once again, whether you've got a Chromebook or desktop computer, whatever you may have, that's an, that's an easy way uh, for you to put stuff into your portfolio. So whether it's video, audio, documents, pictures, you can easily upload that and then using the online audio recorder, quickly record something and upload that to say something about your work. Then your teacher gets a notification that's been added. And now the teacher can go in and see that that student has added some new evidence and they can go in take a look and hear what that student has to say so that really was a quick overview of the different ways that you can use uh, the new Brightspace portfolio app I think it has a lot of potential it has so many great features easy for students to use whether you're in JK grade 12 or beyond it's a great way to keep and collect evidence and teachers can even use it to collect different evidence for their own personal portfolios. And we've used it a lot actually even at Access with the adult learners and use it in so many different ways for some of the different adventures and work that they're doing, doing um, at Access. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please contact me if you have any questions. I'm here to help. That's what I'm here for. I would love to do more work with you in your classes using Portfolio. So you can call me email me, contact me anytime uh, to discuss this more. So thank you very much and enjoy.